hi and welcome to my channel so i had a conversation with one of the ladies who is part of my private coaching program and she said to me melvis i'm an accountant back home look many of my friends who are also accountants who are bankers very successful businesses they've all moved to the uk as carers and look i think this is crazy that's what has made me start to think hmm maybe i should move as well but I don't want to move to the UK as a carer or all these different jobs. Can I move as an accountant? And I was like, of course you can move to the UK as an accountant, you know. And she was like, okay, what are my chances getting a job? And we had to go through this deep conversation about the differences between jobs that are on the shortage occupation list and jobs that are not and how the actual recruitment process in the UK works. So in today's video, I'm going to be explaining the importance of choosing the right job to apply when you want to move to the UK as well as these jobs that are on the shortage occupation list, why is there jubilation when a job is added to the shortage occupation list? Look, it is like a game changer where the government announces that from today, XYZ date, XYZ job is now going to be on the shortage occupation list. It's the same thing that happens with carer jobs. So if you're new to my channel, you're welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, I appreciate your time. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, like, really? Take this opportunity to join the family by hitting the subscribe button so that you're the first person to be notified every single day when I drop a new video on here at 10 a.m. prompt UK time. My mission is to ensure that you're well informed of the best opportunities that there are to move to the UK, to succeed, to excel, to thrive in your career without spending thousands of pounds and millions of money. And the worst is that many people are even spending all this money without getting anywhere. So you're going to sell everything, take loans, borrow money, get into bankruptcy, still you'll get nothing out of it. So my mission is to bring you that information so that you know exactly what is going on. So obviously, like I've said in today's video, we're going to be talking about the difference with a job that is on the shortage occupation list versus a job that isn't and how should you position yourself so that you're way more likely to get a job and look that's one thing that i always say with uk jobs for me it is not how you get to the uk that matters it is what you do with yourself once you get to the uk that ultimately is going to determine your success me, for example, I started my UK journey as a carer in a nursing home. You know, I was proud. I was enjoying what I was doing. But after a while, I thought to myself, look, I cannot continue with this forever. I need to do something more. And so I went and studied nursing. Once I graduated with a first class degree in nursing, I decided that actually there was more. I went back and did a master's in mentorship in nursing and then back again to now doing um, another master's in advanced clinical practice and I'm now working in the most senior clinical nursing position which is an advanced nurse practitioner and that's why I'm passionate about this career progression and saying it is not how you start in the UK that matters but it is how you're progressing within your journey and this is what I took time we spoke for about three hours I was just trying to make her understand that look there are certain things that if you're good at what you do, when you get to the UK through a legal means, you're still going to shine. You're still going to excel irrespective of how you've gotten here. The thing is to get here legally so that you're permitted to work and then you can find yourself because that's the mission. It is not that you get to the UK on a particular pathway, you're obliged to remain in that pathway. No, because when you get to this country, there are more opportunities that you're going to have that you would never have had if you were applying from back home and that is what i want you to take away from this video if you're watching this and you're still back home and you're thinking to yourself oh my goodness melvis you know i don't want xyz job i don't want xyz job i want xyz it doesn't matter once you're here you can make those choices you can make those decisions in a different way obviously the choice is yours ultimately but i do have a free newsletter where I send information about free visa sponsorship opportunities to move to the UK, career progression opportunities in the UK, side hustle ideas that you earn a lot of money, get, you know, to retire early and enjoy life, the freedom, obviously career progression, like I've said. So if you're keen, check the comment section below. I've dropped a link to join, you know, it will take you 20 seconds to join. You just drop your name and email and you're part of it. Also, you, you're you going to see my contacts on there. So that's my WhatsApp number and my email. So if you're keen on contacting me, there's something private and personal, 
then do feel free to use that. Otherwise, I'm more than happy to get your comments in the comment section below so that we can talk about them. So if you're currently out of the UK or you're in the UK now applying for jobs, what is your ideal job? you know, in the UK, which job are you applying for or which job are you currently doing? Just so that we can see the diversity and what else is available because you just never know where good advice can come from and who can see, you know, and who can see you. So again, what does it mean when a job is on the shortage occupation list? Like the carer job, for example, before it was added to the shortage occupation list, it was not legally possible to recruit carers in the UK. And this is because the first thing is the pay. So carer jobs only pay about from £20,000, which is absolutely bollocks and how anybody survives on that, I have no idea because it is not good enough, which again is why you need to push yourself. You know what I mean? So that you're taking things further. It's not only because of career progression, it's because things are more expensive and you need more money and more money comes, you know, when you progress, you're going to earn more. Basically, long story short, that's how it works. So when it's added to the short occupation list, it means that not only are you going to pay lower charges to get to the UK, but UK employers are also going to pay really low fees to recruit people that are on these jobs from overseas because it's more like an incentive inviting people and saying, look, we're really desperate for carers, for example, or nurses. And so we want more employers to recruit more people from overseas so that we can cover these shortfalls, you know, in our workforce. That's what it is about. And so to get that incentive, they make sure that the fees are very low for the employers. So even though some UK employers are going bananas and charging carers 20000 15,000, you know, for jobs and all of that, which obviously legally they shouldn't, they pay like peanuts, you know, in order to get that secure sponsorship or to be a licensed sponsor. It's like very little because those jobs are on the shortage of patient list. So again, that is one thing that really influences that decision making. But if you're watching this and you're wondering, so my name is Melvis, obviously. I have a private career coaching program where I support nurses, carers, students, student nurses, prospective student nurses, people that want to get into healthcare in the UK. Or if you're wanting, um, obviously, career progression, say you were a nurse or midwife back home and now you're working as a carer and you're like, hmm, Melvis, I want to transition back into my lovely, beautiful profession. I can guide you with that NMC registration process and the whole, the entire shebang to make sure that you are working in the UK with or without out to OET. It really doesn't matter because the NMC has implemented quite a few different pathways now that don't include out or OET at all. So yes, it is possible to work in the UK now as an overseas trained nurse or midwife without out or OET. I've done many videos on that. If it's something that you're keen on and a situation that actually affects you, do feel free to you know, check the channel. You're going to see lots of videos that I've done, detailed videos on the pathways to follow. So if you check the comment section below, the description box or the about section of this channel, you're going to see a link to my private coaching program. Once you join, you get that tailored, individualized and personalized guidance. You know, who is recruiting for the job that you want or whatever career progression pathway, how do you proceed? What's the next best step that you need to follow? You know, how do you position your CV? What should it look like? What about the supporting information if needed? So these are all the sorts of things that are covered in that program. So another thing that I said to, you know, my lady, obviously, was that when you have a high paying job, um, like being an accountant, the company that is recruiting you needs to prove to the immigration authorities that there is no suitable, you know, suitably qualified person in the UK to take that job. And this is something that is called the resident labor market test. And this is something that for high paying jobs, look, people in the UK are going to be interested. If there's a job that, say, for example, working as an accountant, that pays really well, good work-life balance, everything is so amazing. You're going to have lots of people here that want to do that job. And by so doing, it is very difficult to get it as an overseas candidate because the company would not be able to justify, as in legally be able to justify, why they're recruiting an overseas candidate instead of a homegrown, you know, per accountant if that person is qualified to get a job, which means that the priority is always the UK citizen or somebody already resident in the UK 
to put it as such for those high paying jobs because it makes a massive difference obviously if you recruit somebody that doesn't need video sponsorship at all you know or somebody who needs it so again this is another big factor why high paying high skilled high value jobs don't really offer visa sponsorship is because you know there are so many people in the uk that are interested because it pays well and it's got a good life obviously but most importantly the company would not be able to pass this resident labor market test because they're gonna you know don't need that evidence to say oh we are we we um advertise for this job i think you need to advertise the job for at least 30 days we advertised nobody applied or people applied and this was the best candidate whatever it is they would need that evidence so when you're choosing jobs to come to the uk be very wise and remember that like i've said it is what you do with yourself when you get here that ultimately matters not necessarily how you get here or which job you use to get here i've shared loads of information here about other opportunities do check them out also check out these two videos that are linked here especially for you thank you for your time and i'll see you in this